T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition. And liftoff of Falcon 9. Go SpaceX, go NRL 48. Vehicles pitching downrange. M1D chamber pressures are nominal. At T plus 30 seconds and counting, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Vandenberg Space Force Base. And in just a few seconds, we'll throttle the engines down in preparation for max Q, a period of maximum aerodynamic pressure. This is a critical moment during flight because the combined stressors Power caused by Falcon 9 accelerating through the atmosphere and the ambient static pressure are at their greatest. Falcon 9 is supersonic. To help go from vertical to horizontal, the first stage also performed a pitch kick just after liftoff. This is a maneuver known as a gravity turn, where the engines gimbal a small amount, and it turns the first stage from going straight up to max Q. horizontal. And we just heard the confirmation of max Q, where the rocket experienced the greatest mechanical stress during flight. The rocket typically needs to go 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back to Earth and get into orbit. You can track our progress to orbit by watching the left corner of your display. That's showing first stage velocity and chill. altitude. Now, coming up, we have several events in quick succession. We should hear all these called out by mission control, starting with main engine cutoff, or MECO, then stage separation, stage one flip, second engine start one, and boost back burn. Main engine cutoff is when we shut down all nine M1D engines on the first stage. Stage separation is when the first and second stages of Falcon 9 decouple from one another. Stage one flip is when the booster uses its nitrogen gas thrusters to flip the booster's orientation around. Second engine start one, we will light the MVAC engine on the second stage for the first time, and after that is boost back burn, where the engines will light to place stage one on a trajectory to the landing zone. So keep an eye out for those events happening back to back. Stage separation confirmed. Here you go. I'm back, start up. And there we had confirmation of Miko stage separation, stage one flip, second engine start one, and boost back burn. Coming up, we'll be fairing separation just a few seconds from now. The fairing jettisons away from the second stage as it is no longer needed to protect the payload once we're in space. Fairing separation confirmed. Great confirmation of fairing separation, and as mentioned earlier, we will be attempting to retrieve those fairing halves again once they fall back to Earth. Now, coming up next will be the shutdown of the boost back burn. We are currently at T plus three minutes and about 30 seconds into today's mission. And the next major milestone is coming up at the T plus six minute mark. When you should see the first stage's entry burn on your screen. To start that entry burn, we will be lighting the three M1D engines on the first stage, starting with the center engine, known as E9, and followed shortly by the E1 and E5 engines. This is similar to pumping the brakes to slow the vehicle down as it passes back into Earth's atmosphere. We need to do this to slow down uh, and reduce re-entry forces, which will help us recover and reuse the first stage. During the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but the vehicle is still moving really fast. And this causes it to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also known as the rocket's plume, which deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle's surface. That's why our flight-proven vehicles look the way that they do. That soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight, that layer of soot builds up a little bit more on the surface of the vehicle. Both vehicles are on a nominal trajectory. 
Now we are still more than one minute away from the beginning of the entry burn. On the left side of your screen, you can see the first stage decelerating and making its way back to Earth. At the request of our customer, we will not be displaying any views of stage two for today. We do have some great views of the Falcon 9 first stage on its return journey. And it's not only using those Merlin engines, but also nitrogen gas thrusters and titanium grid fins for control. Reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, enabling more investments in critical space infrastructure. The Falcon 9 first stage supporting today's mission is performing this entry burn for its 18th time. And the payload fairings are also flight proven with one half flying for its 28th time and the other for its 27th. Now we are about 15 seconds away from the beginning of the entry burn, which is the second of three burns that Falcon 9 will perform on its way back to Vandenberg. You'll see the engine graphics light up as the engines themselves do on the bottom of your screen. The entry burn has begun for the first stage. This will last about 15 seconds. And again, we're slowing the vehicle down in preparation for its final burn and landing. Now the entry burn is shut down on the first stage and coming up next will be the landing burn in a little bit less than a minute from now. The Merlin engines on the Falcon first stage are optimized for sea level and they each achieve around 190,000 pounds of thrust each during ascent and descent. At liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage has thrust greater than five 747 airplanes at full power. In comparison, the single MVAC engine- Stage one FTS has saved. The single MVAC engine on the second stage has a much wider nozzle than the M1D sea level engines, and it's optimized to operate in space, producing 2,500 pounds of thrust in vacuum. Now the landing burn has begun for the Falcon 9 first stage. This is the final burn the booster will perform before landing. Another successful landing of our Falcon 9 rocket. This was the 18th. Stage two is in terminal guidance. This was the 18th launch and landing for this first stage. Now, as a reminder, we will not be showing any stage two or deployment views at the request of our customer. So, with that landing of the Falcon booster, we will be bringing our webcast to a close. We'd like to thank the NRO for entrusting us with today's mission, and we'd also like to thank the Range and FAA for their support. If you're interested in more launch coverage, head over to spacex.com forward slash launches for the most up-to-date information. And when you're there, check out our new departure board featuring our upcoming launches with details such as mission name, launch, and landing site, and liftoff time. And remember to follow at SpaceX.